Hi, I'm Kaming, a final year civil engineering student from University of Malaysia Police. Today, I'm going to show you a video about the finite element analysis of deep excavation work problem using Plexis 2D software. Have you ever wondered how the deep excavation is done and how the engineer ensures the design of earth retaining structure is feasible? In this video, I will provide you a brief explanation and an answer to this question. Without further ado, let's start the video. Hi and welcome to this video. Today, I will provide you with an introduction to earth retaining structures and delve into the simulation of excavation, specifically focusing on the use of a contiguous board pile, CBP wall as the earth retaining structure, all accomplished through the utilization of Plax's 2D software. Let's dive right in. Earth retaining structures such as diaphragm wall, contiguous board pile, sheet pile wall, secant pile wall supports the sides of deep excavations preventing soil from collapsing or eroding, as well as to provide waterproof cutoff barriers and load bearing elements. Cast in situ board piles are formed by excavating a hole of the specified size or diameter to the required penetration depth and casting the excavated hole with concrete of specified strength after the reinforcement is lowered into the hole. When the piles are constructed in a row, they can be used to form as earth retaining structure known as contiguous board pile wall. Plaxis 2D is a widely used finite element analysis software program specifically designed for geotechnical engineering and soil mechanics applications. It is used by geotechnical engineers and researchers to analyze and simulate the behavior of soil structure interactions in two-dimensional 2D space. The software uses the finite element method to discretize the soil and structure into smaller elements, allowing for a detailed analysis of complex geotechnical problems. Users can input geotechnical data, material properties, boundary conditions, and loads to create realistic numerical models. The software then calculates stress, displacement, and deformation patterns within the soil and structures, providing valuable insights into the behavior of the system. In this illustration, we can see the soil model used in the simulation. The soil layers are classified by the soil strength in terms of SPTN value. It's important to note that the width of the retaining soil and the depth of the soil below the excavation level should ideally be three to five times the height of the retaining soil. First, we have to define the soil stratigraphy, create borehole and define the soil layer height, create and assign soil material data, Assign material data to the corresponding soil layers. Next, we will define the CBP wall. Go to Structures tab, create plate and input the plate material data. The material data of plate element will be derived in terms of per meter run basis. Assign the material data to the plate. Create positive and negative interfaces of the plate. The term interface refers to the boundary or interaction between different materials or sections within the model. It defines how different materials or elements interact with each other, allowing for the simulation of realistic behavior in the analysis. The interface value, R inner for different material is demonstrated in this table. Then we will define the excavation level. We can create line and draw the excavation level, which is five meters below ground level. After that, we will define the distributed load. Create line load and draw the location of the distributed load. Assign the loading value in the selection explorer window. That's all for the soil and structure part. Let's move on to mesh tab. Generate mesh and view mesh. Here you can view the meshing of model. You can also view the mesh quality. A perfect face of a mesh element consists of an equilateral triangle. Elements with sharp angles should be avoided. The quality of mesh is indicated with red and green color from the scale of 0 to 1. The minimum value should be larger than 0.3 to ensure the calculation speed and accuracy of result. Next, we will proceed to the stage construction. In practice, the construction of an excavation is process that can consist of several phases. First, the wall is installed to the desired depth. Then, the soil is excavated to the desired depth. 
These processes can be simulated with the Staged Construction tab by using the Phases Explorer window. The initial phase indicates the phase before any excavation work. Therefore, the plate, interfaces, and load are not active. Add phase in the Phases Explorer window and activate the plate, interfaces, and load. This phase indicates the installation stage of CVP. After that, add another phase for the soil excavation. Deactivate the first and second cluster. Next, go to the Flow Condition tab to modify the groundwater level. In the initial phase and install CBP phase, the groundwater level is set as the head level in the Create Borehole step. Global water level indicates the default water level for all clusters. Go to the Excavate to FL phase, draw a new groundwater level corresponding to the height of the excavated level. Then, the first and second excavated cluster are set as dry cluster. The clusters will then turn gray color. The pour pressure calculation type will be changed to steady state groundwater flow to simulate flow condition. Finally, go back to the staged construction tab. Click the calculate button to calculate the project. You can view the illustrated results such as stress, displacement, and deformation patterns. Within this section, we delve into a sensitivity analysis focused on the lateral displacement of the CBP wall. The lateral displacement is crucial in evaluating the performance of embedded retaining wall as it will affect the serviceability behavior of the wall as permanent structure and detrimental effect on the surrounding structures or utilities. This analysis involves the manipulation of four key variables, groundwater level surcharge, the length of the embedded wall, and the diameter of the piles. The main goal of this analytical investigation is to explore and understand the influence and consequences these specific variables have on the lateral deflections exhibited by the CBP wall. To initiate the analysis, our first step involves adjusting the groundwater level. Specifically, we manipulate the groundwater level by employing five distinct values ranging from one to five meters below ground level. The findings reveal a clear correlation between the groundwater level and the lateral displacement of the wall. As the groundwater level lowers, the lateral displacement of the wall also decreases. This aligns with the theoretical expectations. A high level of groundwater at the location can cause a decrease in the shear strength of soil, induce higher hydrostatic pressure and consequently leading to an upsurge in lateral pressure exerted on the wall. Next, proceed to vary the line load magnitude, systematically adjusting it to values of 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50 kilopascal. A minimum design surcharge of 10 kilopascal is applied to cater for construction loads and unforeseen circumstances. Higher surcharge may be encountered when there is additional load such as traffic load, machinery, and material stockpile. The outcomes reveal a clear trend. The lateral displacement of the wall exhibits a direct and proportionate relationship with the magnitude of the surcharge. In simpler terms, as the surcharge load increases, so does the lateral displacement of the wall. Then proceed to the third variable, the embedded wall length in soil. The embedded wall length is altered systematically varying across a range of values encompassing 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 meters. The subsequent empirical observations distinctly highlight inverse proportionality between the embedded wall length and its resultant lateral displacement. When the embedded wall length increases within the soil, the lateral displacement of the wall proportionally decreases. This occurs because when the embedded wall is longer, it has more area of contact with the soil, which generates greater passive lateral pressure. This increased pressure works to prevent lateral movement, making longer embedded walls more effective at reducing lateral displacement. Let's move on to the last variable. The pile diameter is manipulated to analyze the wall stiffness. The pile type implemented in this analysis are 750, 900, 1000, 1200, 1500, 1800, and 2000 millimeters with pile spacing equivalent to pile diameter plus 100 millimeters. The material data of the respective pile type is calculated and inputted. The findings indicate that the lateral displacement of the wall is inversely proportional to the pile diameter. The larger the pile diameter, the smaller the lateral displacement of wall. 
This phenomenon is attributed to the enhanced stiffness of the wall as the pile diameter increases, which in turn improves the wall strength to retain the soil. Furthermore, these findings offer a crucial perspective on choosing the ideal pile size. As we can see in the graph, the lateral displacement of the wall does not decrease significantly after the 1500 mm pile. Therefore, the optimal pile size falls within the range of 750 to 1500 mm, depending on the acceptable deflection criteria of the wall. Finally, we can conclude that the lower the groundwater level, the smaller the lateral displacement. The larger the surcharge, the larger the lateral displacement. The longer the embedded wall length, the smaller the lateral displacement. The larger the pile diameter, the smaller the lateral displacement. As we wrap up this presentation, I encourage you to apply these insights in your own work, whether you're an engineer, a builder, or simply someone curious about the fascinating world of geotechnical engineering. By harnessing the knowledge shared here, we can contribute to safer, more efficient, and more resilient infrastructure for the future. Last but not least, I want to thank you, Johan, for granting me this opportunity to complete my industrial training as a design engineer trainee. It was a wonderful and valuable learning experience. That's all from me. I hope you find this video helpful. Thank you.